Alex Ansary here, continuing on with our podcasts late into the night, going from topic to topic, and launching forward into this uh, winter of 2016, 2017. But, you know, I want to talk a little bit more about the unrest psychology. And so, you know, the, the conversation of martial law, unrest, and whatnot, it's really been... Um, you know, in our consciousness quite a bit since 2007, 2008. Uh, for, for some people, it goes back a little bit further prior to the whole Y2K period. I've also theorized that there's something that I call uh, catastrophobia that tends to occur during the solar maximums. It's like, you know, it's a period where it seems to be more people having visions it's like the veils are thinner when we have more solar flares. People are having visions, visions of things to come, you know, like the timelines coming together. And so there's prepping waves that come from these insights as well as the instincts, you know, the body, chronobiology being directly impacted by the surplus of energy coming from the sun. So again, we have these booms and busts, if you will. There are these, there really are these solar-driven business cycles, if you will, to the prepping industry. Some people are ready for what's to come. Some people are not. I've stressed a lot of um, importance on discernment. So they're using the false Islamic invasion to create what I call adrenal fatigue. You know, you've, you've heard of this. It's an actual condition. And it could be caused by poor diet, too much coffee, too many cigarettes, not enough sleep, you know, uh, too much stress, being exposed to, you know, the you know wrong lights. <laughs> and, and I do notice in the supermarket, I don't know if you notice this as well, you know, under those fluorescent lights and having worked at a grocery store myself, I'm aware of what prolonged exposure to those lights uh, you know, its impact on consciousness. And so, you know, like in society right now, there's just a lot there. A lot of unsettled emotions, a lot of misdirected energy and anger. And in, in a way, it is kind of like a, um, a kettle pot, you know, and it hasn't even approached... Uh, what I think it could look like. But these things have waves. They often follow the solar cycles. We're going into a solar minimum. But before you know it, we'll be going back into the solar maximum phase. And I think the next one will be a big one. Perhaps the uh, solar cycle of all cycles, if you will. And uh, there's actually, in my mind, there's no doubt, you know, at some point we'll be getting the uh, the NASA projections for sunspot cycle 25. And, uh, you know, 24 was not what it was expected to be, you know, and so we have some people going, well, we're going into an ice age and yeah, not so convinced that this is it. However, a very large cycle that can trigger a lot of major events on the earth can be something that, yes, in fact, is something that is the precursor to a, um, a new, um, extended minimum or new Mandarin minimum and a lot of stuff's gonna be happening around 2025 and I have these pinch myself moments but I and I the, the date is now becoming something that governments are talking about on a regular basis and I talked about this is the peak of the next solar cycle we could see this track record going 2500 years in time using shiny sunspot counts. Alexander Javinsky, one of the first to put this data together, to, to publish it. Burl Payne and others have added their two cents, and I've added my two cents, and yet the world has still chosen to not see the correlations between the sun and cycles of war and peace, but it's there. So one of the reasons why I'm not freaking out about World War III, like others, is because... I see what they're doing. I see exactly what they're doing. And I see exactly what they're doing, where they're doing it, on the timeline. And so, boom, as expected by the middle of this year, 
World War III just a regular conversation. It's just a matter of when and how it's going to go down, not if. The ego takes a blow. I've talked about this for years. I feel like a lot of people just don't seem to have the memory to remember. To remember periods where they thought the words that I was saying, too extreme, too out there. Now it's happening. But I'm saying it's staged, and this is just the beginning. And and hang on to your seat, but don't freak out. Hold on to your helmet, but relax. At the, take a deep breath. They are psychologically, psychologically prepping the population for world war at this time. That's where you're, you know, you're seeing the headlines about the Russians and the bunkers in Russia and all the pro-Putin propaganda that's going along with this, which is really going to end up biting Americans in the ass later on. There's a reason why they're, they're bringing Putin up artificially to this weird status. And whatever's going on with this election and the next election. And I've said my piece on Donald Trump. And I've said my piece on reverse psychology. They've made it seem that the establishment is pro-Clinton and, and anti-Trump. But when you actually put on the they love, the they live sunglasses and you see things as they are, it's a Buddhist phrase, by the way, to see things as they are, to put on the sunglasses and, and see what's really there. And when you put on the sunglasses and you see what's really there, oh, you see the machine making sure that the FBI investigating Clinton is the number one story you see when you go to news.google.com. Well, wait a minute. I thought, I, I, I heard from Jeff Rents and Alex Jones that, that Google was for Clinton and that they, they were scrubbing all negative things about Hillary Clinton. It's a conspiracy because the establishment hates Trump. And then... You know, you look again, it's like, no, I'm I'm on news.google.com because I post news. It's a part-time job for Associates website. I look at what is mainstream and trending, and I pull multiple stories. I don't go to before it's news.com. You know, people could say what they want about the mainstream, but I do stick with real stories that I resyndicate and share for this person's audience. I don't grab fake headlines. And by the way, in this in this zombie apocalypse, um, I I will post real headlines, clearly showing that there is overlap with these candidates and these governments. And yet, and yet, it's like people are so broken that they still have the political messiah worship thing holding them back, like some sort of weird tick, like half retarded. This is only thing that I'm, I'm I'm not trying to make fun of retarded people. That's not something that I do. That's not what I'm doing now. But if you look at what's taking place here with people acting like the the electoral system works and blah blah blah, regardless of our view on Trump, but just it, yeah, we're voting for the. What are you talking about? How do you go from staged terror attacks, police state camps, and oh, we're we're gonna vote our way? Out. You go from shadow government, underground bunker. With the off-world base, I'm just I'm just throwing out stuff, just themes here, themes, folks, that you've seen heavy hitters in the alternative media cover for years too. Donald Trump, Donald Trump. I mean, what is this? What the signal from they live was sending out the entire time? Donald Trump, whoop, whoop. Donald Trump, the establishment, Hillary for prison, banger in the prison. I mean, what 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 is this? Banger in the prison. I mean, what the fuck? Giving the control left all the talking points that they... Oh, look at the misogynists. Look at the racists. Yes. Yes, they have all the ammunition. They have all the ammunition that they need. Oh, oh, and the right has all the ammunition that it needs. Oh, it's a well-armed civil war, but it's not physical necessarily yet, although you see aspects of the zombie apocalypse breaking out in society. You know, something out of world star hip hop, and uh, you know it's a, it's a parking lot brawl, but it's energetic in many cases. It's a psychic war. 
You know, so right now they got they got this, you know, the the kettle pot. It's it's whistling, it's boiling, it's it it's it's coming to a crescendo. All this anger, male, female, male, black, white, all this just foreigner, immigrant, white person. Oh, angry, white, defensive. Everybody's after the white person. Oh God, victim. And then all the other programs. Oh, everything else. And they get us to identify with certain identities. And oh, everybody else is against us. And uh, we're just. We've been really played off against each other in this Tower of Babel. And what I'm trying to do with these podcasts, what I'm always trying to do is explain that we've been set against each other. The illusions of separation, it binds us to this matrix. I come back to it again and again. You know, this is not a gimmick. This is a spiritual truth that I am bringing into this. If only the people could see this, would they be involved in a, in a manufactured civil unrest scenario? riots at the election no matter who wins no they'd be in a higher state of consciousness they'd be stepping back also from looking at any of these candidates as the ultimate devil or ultimate messiah and see them as the puppets of the new world order that they are that Putin is that the leadership in China is they all are serving the same syndicate as they plan out this war so on the path to world war three manufactured civil unrest as the Soros cycle culminates did you notice the increase in geomagnetic storms in the last month? Have you heard me talk about the links between drive-by shootings and solar flares that you're actually being able to, uh, I, I, maybe one to five, you know, depending on how many people are actually listening, going maybe one percent to five percent of those listening to these YouTube videos will notice when there's a geomagnetic storm and violence spiking in a major city or major geopolitical moves. We're on the verge of World War III. It's going to happen any day now. Here's the stare down. And, and notice how they did that stare down between Putin and Obama. It's like ding, ding, ding. It's like the, uh, you know, ooh, yeah. Like, you know, with the... Uh, professional fighters and boxers you know the pre-interview where they're, you know they're throwing chairs and the posses are going at it yo at the press conference to announce the fight yes it's mike tyson and some other dude and they're they're brawling and they're going back and forth and it's all it's all set up that way there's there's obama looking down at at putin and there's putin looking up at obama it seems real the body language is clear and people are going oh my god look at that and i'm going this is this is this is the ultimate example of stage managed acting as they staged Many things in the past, as they get ready to stage this third world war, they prep this. This is the this is the pre-fight conference brawl. And, and when you look at how primitive it is, oh my god, wow! They really think people are stupid, so they're gonna play this out like they're doing doing everything short of just holding up your fists. You know, as the press takes pictures. Coming up, Thursday, November fifth, Trump Casino. Vladimir Putin takes on Barack Obama in a steel cage match. I mean, what kind of audience does this shit work on? It works on an audience that's been spoon-fed that this is real. Yes. And they watch the professional wrestling and the narrators on professional wrestling talk about it all like it's real. And you watch documentaries, by the way, of the WE and you can learn a lot about that, about their own self-sponsored WE propaganda of the satanic institution. And they, you know, kind of recreate reality and talk about the wins like they were real, the matches like they were real, you know, and, and, and these wrestlers getting all caught up in the character like it's a real character in the real win and what it felt like to hold the title and you're like what the fuck dude what are you talking about holding the title i mean it's all control it's part of, and sometimes you play the heel and you give up the title it's not like whether you're good or not it, it's it's what's in the script why are you talking about you know things like there's no script because they want to play that role and they want to play the superhero and they love the attention that they get from the fans so we look at the political equivalent of it, and so interesting to see Donald Trump in the WE. I actually see a picture of him sitting next to a mobster that he claimed that he had no ties to as they were at some sort of a, uh, a WE event recently. But the links between politicians and WE and the so-called professional wrestling, it's startling. So when you literally have crossover... I mean, I, when you talk about in plain sight, 
This is some serious in plain sight stuff. So uh, I remember talking about this in 2013. Not the first time I talked about it, but the direct connection with the solar cycle. This solar cycle going off with a bop pop. Not that, you know, they, they, people say that we're already in World War III, but I'm talking about the major events that lead to like cities getting attacked and things like that. We're a ways off from that. So we've been on this path for some time. And I've always seen this as a period by 2016 where, yeah, now World War III is, is entering the conversation, but the massive focus is civil unrest, civil unrest, civil unrest. And there are so many different civil unrest programs, like dozens that they've ran the last several years, from Ferguson to the Black Lives Matter movement to um, to the Burns, Oregon thing being the PSYOPs, and I believe the Bundys being um, you know federal operatives. More than likely, a whole lot of money being doled out for many informants that the government is making sure that you are not aware of regarding the Oregon standoff case. There are just so many different things uh, that have gone on in the last couple of years regarding massive civil unrest. And people really just get sucked into it. It's, it's very animalistic when you have the group hive mind and they're, they're responding to a form of tyranny. And when you look at Portland, it's like there's so much to respond to. It's like a big angry mob of, of misdirected aggression, really, you know, at, at the city for a much deeper systemic culture of debauchery, the Portland culture of sin, if you will. Not to sound too religious, but most of you that are regular viewers that have heard my commentary on Portland, those that know Portland, you're aware of the real Portland spirit. <laughs> and it's not the fault of a dude named Charlie Hales. Just, just got to let you know. It's uh, kind of a bigger collective thing. So, yeah, you, you have a lot of people from the left and the right that are just blaming local mayors and uh, you know sheriff's department and politicians for a, uh, a corrupted society. We got to take self-responsibility. They gotta know when to leave. When when you can, it, it, it's like an alcoholic or addict coming to a state of clarity, a moment of clarity. Well, there's also a moment of clarity that somebody in the grid may come to you regarding society and what's really going on. You know, it's it's not just that the elections are rigged; it's that the majority of the people around us are actually buying into it, full heartedly. You know, this extreme left and right. You know, go at it. You know, all all our wrongs that group. And just and prepping and prepping and prepping and prepping and building and building and building and building for some sort of crescendo. And then just this massive, you know, predictive programming. Civil unrest after the election, but it's going to be the other person's fault and they're going to throw the election. And to see the, the machine just get conspiracy with it. Vote fraud, vote fraud, conspiracy, shadow government, Hillary Clinton, demon, new world order, WikiLeaks, Donald Trump, Federal, and just bringing all this stuff out and just distorting it inversion distortion inversion distortion bread and circus a little bit of cyanide so all of this has been going on and a lot of people just are not aware of it and um, we can uh, shine the light on certain things but a lot of people are just simply in violent denial And that's what's really important. You know, it could be a, a, a tough pill to swallow. You know, I believe in consciousness. I believe in non-local awareness. I believe in uh, powers of the mind, power of consciousness. And, uh, the, you know, the very things that people do in, regarding the law of attraction to bring themselves material wealth in the city, I think that can be used in a much more mindful way. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people are here to be forced to wake up rather they are they are uh, whether they consciously are volunteering to, to go through this lesson uh, some people don't like to hear about this place being called a classroom whether they like it or not they are in the classroom of life they are here to learn some lessons some very hard lessons and I just simply believe this to be the truth. There, there is just a greater reason why we're here and where we came from, what we've done before, and the things that we should do to evolve beyond this place. Maybe there's a lot of potential to evolve beyond this place at this time. It's possible. They, they certainly are misdirecting human imagination and creativity in whatever ways they can. And the very essence of what we are is powerful. It is a very powerful thing. 
But right now I can see what they've done to the alternative media and I'm overwhelmed. There's, there, you, one can almost say there's no hope. Why even fight it? I mean, this is bad. This is real, real bad. It may be, but someone at least has to comment on it. And I'm grateful that I'm able to comment on it from outside of the epicenter of the uh, the energetic zombie nuke that's gone off. I'm far from Portland. I'm far from Denver. I'm far from New York City. I'm far from Florida. So, uh, you know, I've worked really hard to get to this point. Uh, to have the tools at my disposal and to be able to sit here at a desk, you know, in a 10 by 12 shed instead of an RV in, you know, any town USA. As I've been on this off-grid path for a few years now, after being involved in the alternative media for 10 years, all roads have led to this path. And I want to help some of you, to the best of my ability, unplug from this matrix. You know, not be held back uh, by some of these uh, manipulations, uh, you know, these, these attempts to rile you up, make you angry. You know, identify with this racial group. Identify with that racial group. Fear this group. Fear that group. Or be stuck in anger and resentment at what that group has done to you. See yourself as more than that, more than your name, more than your nationality, and see how they're trying to play us off against each other. If there's any way you can help others once you really grasp what's going on, you should help others. You should help others, and you should encourage others to help others. I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, some people say the, the road to hell has been paved with good intentions. Maybe some people just create certain uh, catchphrases to just not even give a damn or have any good intentions. And maybe that's what's actually missing in today's day and age. Genuine, honest, good intentions. People want to see an intentional community. People need to work for an intentional community. People need to show others that an intentional community can't exist and, and, and not be, you know, some sort of fringe reality TV show. Or, uh, you know, you look up Off the Grid, the documentary. What do you get? You get Off the Grid live from the Mesa. Watch that documentary. Get back to me in the comment section. And you tell me if that's a conscious example of a off-grid functional community. It, it, it's not an example of that. We, we are living in a reality where we are faced with the truth that we're capable of so much more than this. And that humanity is not expressing all that which it is capable of. And we sit with that. Okay, and we muse upon that. And that's where we are on the map. What we have control over is our own lives. And we don't have to become a product of our environment apathetic, zombie-like. Uh, we could become a powerful light in a room of darkness. Sometimes, of course, we may choose to leave a room of darkness and perhaps shine our light from somewhere else or perhaps move that light around. And perhaps people may not realize why we're doing what we're doing. But this is certainly timeless, the path of the mystic, the path of the traveler, the path of the person that has gone with fear few material positions, this prayer to the creator, but not in a religious sense, but has sought to know the mind of God and not fear God, that has sought to see the people free, not enslaved, under an army or under a sword. I mean, this is timeless. This is, this is the type of reality where these things go down, where souls like this grow. And uh, I'll, I'll conclude here. All this manufactured civil unrest, it is there to throw us off the path that we are actually here naturally, organically to be on. I'm Alex Hansery coming to you from Southwest Colorado, November 3rd, 2016.